I'm so excited. I wasn't expecting that. Now, when you guys come home the first day, or even if you're in the first week or first month of having your puppy, it is so tempting. And I know this because this happens to me. It's just an hour or two before bed that you wanna sit, relax, watch some TV, catch up on your phone, whatever it is, read, and your puppy wants to come up to you and they wanna snuggle and you wanna hold them and they wanna doze off and it's the cutest thing ever because when Wally does that about between eight and nine o'clock, he is out. It's so hard to keep him up and sometimes I don't go to bed till 10. And it is so tempting to just hold him and let him snuggle in my arms and sleep right before bed, but guess what that does? Obviously puppies need lots of sleep. Puppies can sleep upwards of 18 to 20 hours a day. So we wanna make sure they get enough sleep. But if you allow your puppy to consistently take a nap an hour or two before bed, you are likely going to have issues with them needing to wake up more frequently throughout the night. So what I like to do with Wally is he now knows that around eight or nine o'clock at night, cause we typically go to bed between, I mean, I guess lately it's been more close to 10 o'clock he knows that that's play, that's work time. And I work with him on basic obedience, on place command, the, Wallace, can you touch? Yes, the touch command, just like that. It's linked down below if you wanna learn how to do that. And my reward for him will be praise or toys. It won't be treats, because I don't wanna feed him right before bed. And now he's gotten to the point where he's excited the hour or two before bed to work his mind. And then guess who's super tired and able to sleep many more hours throughout the night without needing to get up because they're restless or bored or need attention? This guy. One safety tip that a lot of people don't talk about is it is not ideal in any situation at any age for a dog that you're gonna create to leave anything on the dog that includes a collar, a dog tag, or a harness while they're in the crate, or even a bandana. All of these things can be choking hazards if they gets caught in the crate. That is one reason why I love the Diggs crate so, so, so much. Again, links for that in the below. Because of the diamond wire mesh, to me, I, it's so much harder, it seems so much harder for like a dog tag to get stuck in that than it is in those vertical or horizontal line crates, like wire crates, or even the plastic ones with the little holes. That makes me so nervous because if the puppy's trying to get out or it just gets stuck, I don't, I don't wanna think about that. One thing that I think is kind of a given, but I just wanna make sure it's super clear. I hope you're not expecting to sleep a ton the first three weeks that puppy comes home. And that's why I really encourage pet parents to set a schedule before puppy comes home with their family or whoever's in their household to maybe take turns getting up with the puppy because I don't care how good of a dog trainer you are or how good you are with dogs. I mean, I've done this so many times and it had been a little bit since I've had a puppy that was that young, as young as Wally was when he first came home at eight weeks. And boy, was I tired. In fact, I'm still tired. So he's about, for almost 14 weeks old right now. And today he's still only sleeping a solid, and he's about t uh, 12 pounds in weight. And he's only sleeping about a solid, the worst nights he'll sleep four hours. Uh, that's not common. It's typically five to seven hours he'll sleep, which is pretty good. I follow my proactive potty training process. And that basically means that the puppy needs to go outside, especially eight, nine, 10, weeks old, even this guy, at least every two to three hours, some of them when they're really little, really small breeds, every single hour. And that's during the day and that's during the night. So instead of that first night, you putting the crate by your bed, doing all the things we just talked about, and then waiting for the puppy to start screaming to take them out, I recommend to get them, ni to get them nice and tired, put them to bed, you sleep when they sleep, and you set your alarm. For the first night, I would set my alarm for one to two hours, depending on how small the puppy is, and we woke him up to take him potty. And all we did was we woke him up, we carried him outside to the potty area, we waited till he pottied, we used a flashlight, because it was dark, it was cold, and when soon as he, we didn't play with him, we didn't sit there and hold him and snuggle him, no. We picked him up, we put him out in the grass, waited till he went potty. It took him a while the first few times because he's new, he's scared. He's like, why'd you just wake me up? But he did, as soon as he went potty, we gave our marker command, which is Y-E-S, yes, good boy. And we didn't even give a treat or anything. We just took him right back inside and put him to bed. And he cried for a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean like 20 minutes. <laughs> and we just let him cry because it was just his way of kind of figuring out, okay, now I'm awake, what do I do? But guess what he did? He went back to sleep. And then we set our alarm for another two hours. And then we did it again all throughout the night. And it wasn't easy. And it was very tiring. But guess what? After the first 
three nights, four nights, not even, he started catching on like, okay, when I go out in the middle of the night to go potty, it's not play time, it's not eat time, it's not cuddle time, it's I just go to the grass, as soon as I go potty, I go right back in this crate, and when I cry for 10, 20 minutes, I don't get to come out, and then I'm tired and I go to sleep, and as soon as I'm woken up again, I get to come out. I guess I don't really need to cry so much. And so eventually when we put him back in the crate after going potty, he just would go to sleep. It might whimper for five, 10 minutes and still sometimes he'll be like, well, wait, I, I wanna stay up and play. But we don't, we don't yell, we don't reprimand, we don't uh, throw things at the crate. I've seen people shake the crate. We just kind of let him cry it out and it's tiring, you lay there. Deep breaths, put earphones in, watch a YouTube video, watch some more of my vlogs, you know. But I I'm just joking, but that, that by doing that, by not always allowing him to be the one to wake us up, we were not waiting for a mad dash that he needs to go right then. Because here's the thing, if you wait for him to wake you up crying and screaming he needs to go, guess how strong their ability is to hold their bladder when they urgently need to go? It's like 0%. They have basically no ability at that age. Even when he's 14 weeks old, he gives a cue, but if I don't get him out soon enough, he'll go inside. And so what happens if you wait for, the, for them to wake you up, screaming, you have this much time to get them outside. And guess what? You're gonna be half asleep and you're more likely going to, by the time you get to that crate, then they get excited to see you. They have an accident or they go potty in your arms or they go potty walking from the patio out to the grass or you set them down by the back door and they go inside. It's, it's chaotic. But for me, what I find is if I'm proactive about my approach of taking him out, there's much more control. I have more control of, over the situation. So mentally I'm there. I'm not as stressed and alerted by him screaming. And it sets the precedent and sets all of us up, all of us up for success. And don't forget, I have in-depth guides on potty training, crate training, socials, anything puppy linked down below. But I wanna talk about some daily habits that we do every single day with Wally to help him become this kind of puppy. I, he is a highly food motivated dog. And this is a raw, this is raw meat. This isn't just some stale kibble. This is raw meat, raw crushed bone, raw organ. It is the most nutrient dense bioavailable food option for him. And look how good he is doing. Good job, buddy. Yes, good job. Uh, but some of the daily tips that I do, first off is I hand feed him or my mom when she's feeding him, we take turns every single meal just like this and we make them work for it one of our favorites lately is working on the place command and i have a video linked down below on how to teach that but i love making him work for his food because one it teaches your puppy to be gentle because i hold their food or their treats when i'm giving it to them here let me see if i can get a piece here between my thumb and my hand. I know it's crazy. My mom doesn't love touching the food. She uses a spoon, that's fine too. And I do not release it until he's only using his tongue. And then you can put the command, gentle, yes. And that's how you teach your puppy to be gentle. And it's also building a bond with your puppy. They learn to look for you for guidance. So when your puppy is out in the big world with you after they've had their vaccines and you're going on a walk and something scary approaches them, let's say a dog down the street, instead of reacting to that and running after or going crazy, who are they gonna look at? They're gonna look at you because you've worked with them, you've developed that. And what tires dogs out, including puppies, more than anything else is mental stimulation. Plus, we all want a well-behaved dog and this is how you do it. You feed puppies three to four times a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and maybe a snack. So spend five, 10 minutes, maybe feed half their meal by hand and the rest in a smart feeder bowl. Another thing when you are starting with cues, uh, let's say you're asking them for a down or a sit, never repeat those cues. That's something that I see all the time and avoid overusing the, their name. That's kind of two in one because a lot of times, and I'm guilty of this too, we talk too much to our dogs. I'm sorry, like I, I know this is something that you should do as I say, not as I preach because I can't stop talking to my dogs, my mom's dog Wally, because. I'm obsessed, but it's really important that we try to let, talk less, wait more. Ooh, that should be a shirt. Guys, comment below. Talk less, wait more. Because what you can do is, here, watch. I'm gonna ask him to go to an SIT from a DOWN, which we haven't done a lot of. Wally, can you sit? Yes, good job. Did you see that? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I wasn't expecting that. Good job, we'll jackpot that. Yes, good job. We've asked him that just a couple times. I mean, we work on a lot of SITs, but from a DOWN, oh my gosh. So did you see that? I didn't do anything. I didn't say anything. I didn't encourage him. I did not repeat the command, but I waited. Dogs, once you teach them something, they can learn it in a day. I mean, they may not learn it perfectly, but they can understand the general idea, including a young eight, nine, 10 week old puppy. This is stuff we've been doing since eight, 
nine weeks old, by the way. And I just waited for him. Your dogs are smart. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Because if you give in and you keep repeating SIT, SIT, SIT over and over again, they're gonna learn that, oh, I don't have to SIT until she asks me the 10th time. The next habit that we do every day is make sure everyone in that household abides by the same rules or structure or routine that you do. If you call an SIT, SIT, then everybody needs to do it. If you're not repeating the command, nobody should repeat the command. If you don't want the puppy to come on the couch and then your uncle or friend or roommate, who, son, whatever, mom, dad, lets him on the couch, that's confusing for a dog. Consistency is key. Another thing is we don't want to punish, especially puppies. They're so sensitive. Dogs, it's what makes them magical because they are so sensitive and loyal. And it can be so easy when they're nipping at you and you're like, no, don't do that, bad, bad, bad. I know it can be easy to do that, but we don't want to do that. What really works for puppies, at least what's worked best for us, is to redirect. So let's say he was, he's not going to do this right now, like, oh, here we go. I have a slipper here. He loves slippers. So let's say he's, I'm setting him up for failure. Please never do this, but I, I want to help you guys. Instead of forcing them to do something or just ripping it out of their mouth, get their attention, not by using their name, but by going puppy, 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 get on the ground, pat the floor, get excited, and they'll turn around, become more exciting than whatever's in their mouth that you don't want them to have, and they'll come running towards you, then you reward them, Y-E-S, good job, and give them something else that they can chew on. And some people may say, well, wait, won't that tell them that when they're chewing on the slipper, then I get them to chew on a dog toy, and then that's a reward? No, because what you're doing is you're rewarding them, you're getting them excited, you're giving them the toy they can chew on, and you're gonna play with them, you're gonna interact with them, that is quickly going to become far more exciting than your lonely slipper that they're always called away from to then go get something more exciting. And on that note of working with your puppy, if you're working on SITs and downs and T-O-U-C-H command and H-E-R-E -E commands, always very short durations, always positive reinforcement, no punishment like we talked about, uh, but it's so much more effective to have short durations several times throughout the day versus one long one. And here's the key, end on a positive note. Let's say you're working on something really hard and they're just not getting it, but then they finally get it two, three times in a row. That's when I would stop, even if it's after two minutes. Next time you go and work on it, the last thing your dog's gonna remember about that cue or that command is gonna be where you left off. So end on a positive note. Now, before we talk about my favorite food and treats for puppies, I wanna give you a one, one fun pro tip. This is something that I don't talk about often, I wanna say more, but it's gonna help so much when you're crate training your puppy. And that is, throughout the day, when your puppy falls asleep, because your puppy's going to sleep a lot, that's the cutest, that's one of the cutest times is when they're just snuggled up, they fall in the little dog bed you got for them, on the couch, on the floor, or wherever. One thing we did with Wally day one was as soon as he fell asleep and he would just conk out, we'd play with him and he'd conk out, we would gently pick him up and we'd put him in his crate. We didn't shut the door in the beginning, the first, I'm talking the first day, first three days, and we set him in the crate. And we got in the habit of every time he fell asleep, we'd go set him in the crate. And the first probably three to five days, we leave the crate door open. And then on day five or six, we'd shut it an inch, but still be open. And then the day seven or eight, we'd shut it just another inch or half inch. And then over a two, three week period, we kind of shut it, shut it, shut it. And then what that did is just slowly and gently got him really used to being in that crate because that's something you want to practice all the time. Now, if you want to learn my favorite food for puppies, click the video linked right here. I'll jump over there with you right now and we'll go into detail. Or if you want to see the chews and the puppy treats that I highly, highly recommend, you can click the video right here and Wally and I will go over there and we'll go over that together. And I hope you have a beautiful day. Goodbye.